Hello guys, my name is Daniel Prince and I'm here for us to learn together. I would like us to learn on church brand identity. I'll be trusting that at the end, when you are done watching and learning, you are going to be able to understand what we truly mean by church brand identity and the reason why we must invest in church branding. It is very, very essential, very important, and it's very, very easy to go. At the end of this course, for, ever, for anybody that will be following, we are going to be teaching graphic designing on Photoshop. We'll teach partial graphic design on CorelDRAW. And we'll be uploading at least two videos every week on YouTube and on our social media pages for you to follow, learn, and to watch. It's our target that by the end of this series, by the end of this course, you should be able to design church flyers as a pro, brand your church, as, it, as we all know the importance of doing that, so that at the end of the day, we can all rejoice together. And knowing that our God is a God of excellence, we must do excellent things right down to our churches, our branding, our flyers, our logo, our printing, and just everything. For this class, I'll be teaching on advanced design techniques, advanced design techniques in respect to church brand identity. So the first as and most essential thing is choose a app that you are most comfortable with. Most of the time, there are a lot of graphic apps that are being used currently to design. We know of CorelDRAW, we know of Photoshop, Photoshop, we know of Photoshop, we know of Illustrator, we know of Insta just a lot of them. For those doing phone uh, graphic designing, we know of Pixel App, which is obviously if I'm a phone graphic designer, I would recommend that. I would also know of Canvas Pro. The most important thing about them is that you should do the one, use the one that you are very comfortable with. Use the one that you are very comfortable with. Don't just use something because you saw someone doing a graphic design somewhere and with this app and you just see the person using his professional, professional skill to do something really just feel that maybe if I fall into this app, I like this one I've been doing and I start doing it, I automatically do professional flyers just like the person is doing. No, it's a process. So you choosing the app that you are very much comfortable with will pay you a lot of good. Tip number two is plan your design. There is no magic to it. Before going to write exams, we always have to read, we always have to study. Before going for computer practicals or food practicals, we always have to study, right? So it has to do with design. Plan your design, you can plan design by writing. Even sometimes, as a graphic designer, we are supposed to know how to sketch. When it comes to logo, we are supposed to sketch sometimes, like us here at Web Tech Hub, we always sketch our, our design, our logo. Sometimes we send to the client, the client has to choose his logo. Then we now sketch maybe the design theory of them and we send to the client. So you have to always plan your design. It is very, very essential that you be able to plan your design for better products and for focus. Because most of the time we just enter, maybe you enter Photoshop and you are just designing fast, fast, fast. At the end of the day, you are just mixed up. We don't even know what you have done. That's why they currently spend more than three hours six hours, even 12 hours to design one flyer, that's because they are not professionals, or not because they don't know what to do, but it's because why they haven't planned what they want to do. They just feel they have the stuff, it's just so much in their head, and they believe that, no, let, as I fall this, I'll start doing it. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to plan your designs. Plan the necessary steps that are, reco that are recommended for that design. Step number three is select a template or start from scratch. Now, it is funny, right? It is funny because uh, normally as a professional graphic designer, you are supposed to um, start your graphic design from scratch. Yes, you are supposed to start your graphic design from scratch. But here is the deal, and here is the advice. If you intend using a template, make sure that you use that template your own way that is pleasing unto you. If you if the template should totally be different from the other guys, on if not, it's going to give you a lot of problems. And you know, there's no graphic designer and there's no church out there that will love seeing his design, the, the flyer that he did, and someone else to use the template, the same thing. You see, it's going to cause a problem. So, if you're using a template, make sure you use it very, very well. Yeah, starting from scratch is the best. One thing I can recommend is that um, you can maybe just like look, go online. There are a lot of websites there that have graphic design samples. There's Deepers, there is Blanche, there is Pinterest, which is one of the highest one I use. Download the player sample from there and bring it into Photoshop. Try to be doing it. At the end of the day, you just try to do the final things and see. You'll be a pro in less than a time. All right. The number four is use high qualities. Use high picture qualities. It is very essential because most of us, we just like, a man of God takes picture from a selfie and he gives it us to use. It is wrong. 
It is wrong. And us, if we want to burn our churches and set the church where it's supposed to be, we need to get maybe cameras, set up, train camera people in church. We cannot train camera people in church. Get to a footage shoot and get some pictures. Pictures are not expensive, just like us here at World Tech Hub. We can do raw pictures for even 1K. We can do high quality pictures for even 2,500 francs. But, and you can plan. It's not something much. Just say five new pictures every month. That is a budget of around 10,000 francs. So brand the ministry of God because our God is a God of excellence. So if you do something that is out of excellence, God will not accept it. That's the critical truth. And you know, the final truth is that eh, when you know how to brand your church, use high quality images. Even when someone wants to support you, the person sees the quality of your flag. You understand? So it's the technical truth. What I'm telling you is the technical truth. And we need to burn our churches. And we need to have high quality pictures for our churches. Yes. So I'm just advertising my services. We need you to come and put the shoot our web tech up. Raw pictures, we give you 1K, high quality pictures, too far, you see. And you are good to go. And we can, even if you are coming to us and you are doing it, you know it's everything you are doing every, every month. I mean, we can be doing it very, very cheap. But the most essential thing is for us to brand the work of God and brand His church. That's our focus here, and we need high quality pictures to do that. You understand me, right? So I guess we are getting somewhere. Let's continue to the fifth point. Typography and text. Typography and text. It has a lot of part to play when it comes to graphic designing. For example, when you are doing your graphic design, you can use one family phone and you do it. Let me just give you some family phones that are good. You can go to Montserrat, download Montserrat family phone. You can download Reyna's family phone. You can download um, Railway family phone. Do your designs on one straight phone, if not at least three. Three should be the highest that you go. Therefore, when they do their design, they start different phone, present different phone, big size different phone, contact different phone, name of the person different phone. That is how scattered the design is. And like that, it's just, it just put the work of God somewhere. So we need to be able to brand God's choice, value the text and form. Because first of all, we have to understand that God loves orderliness. So we have to do our designs for His glory. And it should be orderly. The other part is choosing colors. Choosing colors is very, very important. And yes, the simple tip how I do use my colors. I select my colors based on maybe the man of God's clothes. I select my colors based on the logo because at least every church needs to have a logo. So when I pick, I pick the colors from there, then I try to blend my background using gradients at the back. Then I try to use maybe a very big color that can show very well. I, when I'm talking of big colors that show very well, I talk about gold, very big and bold, white, very big and bold, silver, very big and gold. And yes, a simple tip. I don't like using yellow on my designs. I like using gold. I don't li like using white on my design. I like using silver. It blends the design and just make it look wow. So that's a tip that I can give you to always use, especially when it comes to colors. Don't mix so much colors. You can use a gradient at the back, or even not learn how to use white space. You understand me? Learn how to use white space, take white, and you just mix it with background. You can do something magical with it. So you have to consider using orderly colors. Most of the time, don't use orderly colors. Go go to go out of your context. There are churches right now, actually, like Minas Chapel. One can say to me that it's a women's chapel design is red. That's what they use. Same for Christ and Mercy. Christ and Mercy likes gold. Christ and Mercy likes blue. And that is why it's on their logo. And that is what is used. Same thing for Apostolic Church. If you see that long white and sky blue, you just know it's Apostolic. Nobody needs to tell you. That is the level at which they are willing to brand. And if we want to do our church goals, if we want our church branding to go to the next level, we, are need, we need to be able to follow a particular context of designing in respect to colors. Now, the second to the last point is always have a review team. What do I mean by a review team? You have this group of people in church that when they want to design, when the man of God sends the design, these people can review the write-ups. They write down what they want to see on the design, how orderly they want it to be. And even after the design is being done, is what you can do then you send it to them. After the design is being done, what do you do? You say to them to review. They confirm that it's in respect with the church principles. Then now it's being published out there for use. And the last point, critical last point, is branding itself. What do I mean by branding? If the church has a graphic designer and the graphic designer is not willing to brand his or herself, 
Then the church should not give the person work to brand them. Because if someone calls himself a graphic designer, the person should be able to brand. Are you getting me? So you must be willing to work to, to you must this person must be willing to convince you to brand and let the church also be willing to pay him for his branding. Except in the as I always say, the Christian of the church and is willing to do it free. So that is the idea I have to share with you today in respect to church branding. I hope you learned something today and see you in the next class.